Hello lovelies, come on in, make yourself feel comfortable. It's exactly one o'clock and it is Tuesday. Uh, we just had hopefully a restful Labor Day weekend. <laughs> welcome, welcome. This is my 23rd, 23rd chat session of Tea with Karen. Hey guys, let's do some shout outs. Oh, Tony Moore. Tony's on. Hi, love. Tony has been instrumental in my musical journey and I just want to give him a big shout out, Tony. Thank you so much for all that you've done in the past. Um, I hope we can perform together soon. Uh, Tony's run many wonderful, magical musical events um, back in back home in London. So I'm so happy to, to see you on here. Um, Erica Carlson's on here, Emelina. Marge, Majda is here. My Melody, Alice is here. Carolyn is here, Emma's here. I love you too, Tony. <laughs> uh, let's do more shout outs quickly. Alexa is here, TNC, Dino is here. Charlotte's here, hello love, under the feather. Monica. Oh, it's so wonderful to see all of you here. Have you all got your cups of tea? Ready? All ready? Um, everyone's returning back to school now and gearing up for work. Uh, so it's, it's been quite, quite busy <laughs> the, past few, uh, the past few days. And I also know that um, family holidays now are kind of done and we're in autumn season, or shall I say in California, fire season. Um, gosh, uh, just a huge, huge thanks, um, huge thanks to all the tireless, the tireless work um, from all our city workers that are so busy round the clock, keeping us safe and uh, protecting our homes from the fires. Thank you to LAFD and the um, LADWP for keeping the power lines up as well. So very grateful for those superheroes. Um, just a hu uh, just a quick note, tea with Karen challenge. My brain's just waking up <laughs> from the long weekend. Um, tea with Karen challenge has been extended to Friday evening because I know some of you have messaged me and said, Karen, please, 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 can you extend? So I will extend. So that will be extended to this Friday. I'm already starting to see so many of your wonderful reflection boards and it's so wonderful i hope you felt good whilst you were in the process of doing those reflection boards and um and i hope you're really proud of yourselves because uh these past few months have certainly been challenging and uh and difficult for many many of us so um give yourselves a pat on the back uh because you guys are superheroes and next level good humans too <laughs> um you can catch up with all the uh, Tea with Karen sessions on www.teawithkaren.com uh, and today's session will be uploaded there as well later on. Uh, what else? I'm just going through my to-do list here, my bullet journaling. Um, Catalina Film Festival. Ah, I'm so excited! Our short film in Hollywoodland is going to be featured at the Catalina Film Festival which runs from September 18th to the 27th virtually. Thank you guys so much for following us on this journey from Bentonville to um, to the American Black Film Festival and now to the Catalina Film Festival. You can follow them on Instagram at Catalina Film um, and I'll be posting more details on, uh, on, on which days and times that you guys can tune in for our screenings for In Hollywoodland. But thank you, thank you so much for all your love and support. It truly means the world to all of us. Um, I did post on my Instagram stories, uh, next month is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, uh, and I posted about A Cause for Entertainment, and you can follow them at A Cause for Entertainment on Instagram over here, or go to www.acauseforentertainment.com. We are going to be having a virtual day of giving on October 18th from 11am to 6pm Pacific Standard Time. Uh, 
some of your favorite actors will be uh, joining in to help raise awareness and much needed funding. So I hope you lovelies can tune in. It'll be such a wonderful day of giving um, and very inspiring too. So I'll be posting more about that too. But for now, I did make the announcement and it's on my Instagram story. So I hope you guys can tune in. And what else? Gallivant. Gallivant has, uh, has now come to an end on Netflix. And uh, I know many of you have been asking if it will go to Disney Plus. You would hope, uh, fingers crossed. And trust me, as soon as we know anything, we'll let you know. Um, it's been quite, uh, it's been quite emotional the past few days. I think because I knew that Gallivant was on Netflix, I felt like there was that lifeline there, that connection with all of you. But then, Mummy, good old mum, was very quick to remind me that no matter what um, incarnation that we have of Gallivant, what we've gained from the show is the incredible, supportive, devoted, so much unconditional love from you guys, the fans of the show, and I, I can't thank you enough, and that's worth everything. You are the reasons why the show was on Netflix for four years. Uh, you kept you kept our show alive. And let's hope and pray that it will find a new home very soon. Um, I've been posting a lot of reminiscing, a lot of reminiscing posts, shall we say, uh, of uh, some of my favorite um, photos and, uh, and scenes. And I'll be doing that continually just to, you know, fill that void because <laughs> I miss it already so much. But just be expecting that because there'll be loads of posts of that coming up. Uh, what else? I think I've gone through my, my housekeeping list. Yes. Now to the fun stuff. <laughs> I'm so excited today to be having a cup of tea with such an inspiring, beautiful human. She's so fierce. She's so empowering. Um, her work, I revere so much. She's such a brilliant, brilliant performer. Um, I'm so happy that she she has some time to join us for a cup of tea. tea. Um, you know her as Ursula in Once Upon a Time uh, from her show's Conviction, Alias, Big Little Lies. She was so fabulous in that. Um, the Fix, The Resident, uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I could go on, but I will bring her on. It is Marin Dungey and you can follow her at Marin, M-E-R-R-I-N-D-U-N-G-E-Y. And I'm going to bring her on. Oh, she's at real, let me correct, correction, real Marin Dungey. Gonna grab my cup of tea. Hello. <laughs> and you have a Canadian mug. Can I not love you any more? I mean, it's my this is my daily daily mug that i have to use i love canada i love our time that we had in canada it's it's just the best so oh cheers, everyone yes you look gorgeous you i mean when do you not anyway but you're just like you're like glowing well i ha i'm lit don't think because it's all cloudy today it's terrible in it's la it's so cloudy i had to put the lights yeah yeah i had to put the lights on but i had i had to put a little headband action it oh. felt very gallivant in, in celebration of you and your horse post this morning. It was like, so incredible. <laughs> you, you got to play the most beautiful princess of all time. Like, I it just, I can't, I can't. Between Jasmine and that, I can't. So this is for you. Oh, my heart. I miss <laughs> you so much. And I'm so happy that you could do this. Oh my God, I'm, I, I'm so honored to be asked. Thank you so much. No, you have made so many of your fans and followers so incredibly happy by um, showing up today. So thank you, thank you, love. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just still waking up from Labor Day weekend. <laughs> I feel like my brain is still farting all over and just <laughs> coming away. I'm like, come on, Karen. Kickstart, come on, come on. Hello. No, listen, <laughs> I'm on... This is a decaf because normally I have a rose chai tea yeah. and I, I do these early morning workouts. That, that's one of the things that I have been doing through the whole COVID, like the whole quarantine 
I have two gals, they're both teachers, and we have been walking every single morning. It, like, it's the way that keeps me, you know, uh, sane. And sometimes it's like when I don't have my kids, it's when it's a week I don't have my kids, it's the, like sometimes the only people I see, you know, and we social distance and mask up and do the whole thing. But um, we have now gone, I think, 800 miles. I mean, like, it's, I'm not even kidding. We were doing 40 miles a week. <gasps> and I, I've had to buy two pairs of tennis shoes because I've gone through them. Like, I just wear them out and my knees start to go. But today we started, uh, or like last week we started the swimming. We, we, we do like, an, so 6.15, swim, swim time. I was swimming. <laughs> That's so, so bad. And it must feel so good to be able to lock into some kind of routine because yes. as you know, with our kind of life, <laughs> locking into a routine is, uh, is nothing short of a miracle. <laughs> it's, it's honestly everything. And to lose the routine of getting up and taking my kids to school and then going to my workout and then like whatever the rest of my day was, is devastating. I mean, then, and then all these things started to fall away. My favorite radio program got canceled and all these things that like just made me happy and were, were familiar. So, you know, establishing this routine with these women saved my life. I mean, kept me completely sane, you know? I mean, I'd fall apart after breakfast. I'd be like, I don't know what to do now, but at least all the way until about 10 o'clock in the morning, I was like, I, I've, I've done something. I've seen people, I, I accomplished something. And you know, getting up every single day, six, six thirty, depending on the day, yeah. helped. I'm so inspired by that. You've just inspired me to call some of my friends because it makes a difference when you can hold each other accountable mm -hmm. um, and to get you motivated, especially whilst we're in this unknown, this sort of limbo. Um, that is so inspiring. I should get, Milo's the one that holds me accountable for taking him for walks. And I know, do you bring your energy out? Guys. Poor Suki. And like the last couple of days, cause we haven't been walking. Cause I, I really, really had to also honor my body and say, guess what? My knees are going, my ankles are bothering me, you know, <laughs> because I live in the hills. So like we've been able to like, before, you know, we started doing Runyon Canyon in the beginning and then that got closed. And so we had to find another route. And so sometimes we would, you know, do Mulholland, whatever. The point is, I've had to honor my body. And so like, now that we're doing the swimming, so he's like, what are we, what? Like, where am I? I'm, like, I'm just gonna go back to bed. Like, she's like, I'll just be here when you're ready. <laughs> so she gets a little trot up the street now, because she's so little, you know, but she's been like doing some crazy miles with us. <laughs> but I bet she loves it too. Yes, she does. I mean, she's fit as a fiddle. Like she's literally like, you know. It's, and it's, the, the trouble is it's so hot the past few days. Yeah. I mean, it was like 111. Uh, it was yeah. 121 in Woodland Hills. I, I can't even like that's just like being in an oven and like melting like a chocolate chip cookie. <laughs> no, no, that is just like not. It, it's just not okay. Like you really. I mean, even even going in the pool was not comfortable because it just was like being in the bath. You know. It just kind of paralyzes. I feel yeah. like it paralyzes my brain function because it's so hot that even be, being in the pool, keeping cool. Still, it's, it's, yeah. So you yeah. end up having this sort of like heat, well, they could, so for some they call it heat stroke or it could be like that, that fog. That yeah. Brain fog. So I'm, I'm sort of relieved that the temperatures now have dropped, but I, I, I can you it. believe now they call it, I saw on, on a cartoon, um, what was it on LA Weekly? They were saying that you've got, yeah, winter, spring, summer, fire season. <laughs> winter, yeah, winter, summer, yeah, but not even winter. It's not even winter. It's just sort of like summer, fire, fall, summer. Like it just never really, maybe a spring, there's a little bit of rain, but like we don't really get a winter. It's just, I hate that. Yeah. And every, cause Although, I, love you, I love seasons, the four seasons. I love seasons. Yes. I will say this though. I read this morning that um, Colorado, Boulder, Colorado, it, was like a hundred degrees the other day, which is abnormal for them. And it's going to snow tomorrow. Like crazy snowstorm, like dropping to 32. That's insane. This is climate change. That's climate change. That's climate change. Anyway, somebody says happy birthday. Happy birthday to like 
Happy birthday. On that note, yes, happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Please say happy birthday. I don't know. I can't see who it was, but happy, happy birthday. Anyway. Is it um, Niam H. Little 09? It's her birthday. Happy birthday, darling. <laughs> That's a nice way to pick us up into the next yes. <laughs> So during this pandemic, I can't believe, because I've been quarantining for six months now. Mm -hmm. Six months. Mm -hmm. um, how have you found your, we talked about your routines, right? but how have you been, um, what have you been up to to help keep up the, the psyche? And Well, obviously the walking. Um, I will say that I, you know, it's been like a pendulum. So, you know, in the beginning, because we didn't know how long it was going to last and like, it was so scary. I went all the way. I mean, I remember being the day it was all shutting down at my, there was a grocery store up near my kid's school. That's like, you know, one of those tiny stores. So it's like super expensive. And I was paying like $10 for a half gallon of ice cream, but I'm like, we gotta have it. Like we gotta have ice cream, you know? So there was always ice cream in the house. And, you know, I maybe had some, you know, extra vodka, you know, like there was a lot of, <laughs> of, you know, to sort of comfort, comfort, comfort. And, watching things that made me feel comfortable you know like i would, went back into parks and rec and sex in the city and things that just made me feel safe you know um and i have to be perfectly honest i went and i also so i was literally that person who it where coffee was handing off to alcohol in the evening it was just sort of like and here's the baton you know um and i developed an ulcer recently um from the stress and the coffee, honestly. So I had to pull back and get deep into my tea. And um, someone sent me a lovely gift for my birthday, with, which had this rose chai. And so now that's my new favorite thing. But, you know, I, and it's funny because I was going to make a cup of this stressed tea that I have and I'm out. Like I've already like cleared it out because mm -hmm. that's how many times I've had that tea, you know? And I was like, oh, who left the empty box, <laughs> you know? Um, so, I went one way over here and now I feel like I'm back to center and you know, there's auditions coming and there's self care happening. And I like, I recently, you know, got to go away with my sister and her family who they've, they've been living in mammoth. So they haven't seen anybody. So it was very safe for me and my kids to see them. And, yeah. you know, just trying to get sane and get real and get back to, finding things that are making you know that are, are really a part of life and not focusing on and you know and getting up every morning with a couple gratitude you know plat like things just like what am i grateful for today because it's so easy to go into the you know hellscape that we're living in and complain mm -hmm. um but primarily having health and my children right now and keeping them safe and happy you know yes because I've been speaking with different um, therapists uh, and reading a lot of articles from different psychiatrists and therapists, and all of them said that it's very common right now during this pandemic that a lot of people experience a wave of anxiety in the morning when they wake up. So I, I love that the first thing you do is in the morning is to remember your gratitude, because I find that the minute that I start focusing on the blessings that we do have, yeah. number one being our health, um, all of a sudden those nerves and that tension starts to dissipate. Um, and I feel like my breathing resumes and I'm okay. But just for those of you who are watching, it is absolutely normal. A lot of people are experiencing this in the morning, but that's when it's so important. Like what Marin's doing, going out for a walk, getting some fresh air, getting some oxygen in your lungs, taking deep breaths. I find meditating even for like two, three minutes at a time just hits that reset button and has been so life-changing for me when sort of those overwhelming thoughts come or we start because this is this is this is nothing it's, that any of us have ever been through the, I, there was an article that was going around that my sister had sent me and i you know went and put it out to a bunch of people and now i see it's you know gone viral about the fact that you know we it, this is not sustainable this level of pa like panic you know like there is a you know, when things happen, when life, you know, hurricanes and things, you go into a mode that is the survival place, but to sustain that and hold on to it for not six months, you know, it's not normal. There's a, a another syndrome that's going around, like, um, like a, I can't remember when my friend said it yesterday about touching, like being like, not being touched, like not hugging people yeah. is crazy. 
crazy, you know, and I, I'm very grateful that I have, you know, my children, my pets, you know, there's something to hold on to. I was able to hug my sister, you know, because she was yeah. a safe person, but I mean, it's just, my daughter keeps asking, when can I hug my best friend? When can I hug her again? You know, and they're back in school and it's God bless. And I, let me just shout out to the teachers. Oh, yes. Yes. I mean, and the women I walk with are both LAUSD teachers and all summer, it was the work that they put into making this school year happen, what they, the, the training, I mean, literally like hats off, raise a glass. Yes. Love you. God bless you. Thank you. Yeah. If nobody wants this. Nobody wanted to do this. And they have worked so hard to get it right and to try and um, appease everyone, you know? Absolute superheroes. And parents, too, who are also a part of that. Because yes. you know, homeschooling at home, I mean, um, amongst other things, there's so many other things that have done as well. And trying to juggle that, you're absolute superheroes. You well, know? thank you. It, it, and more than anything, it's the fact that you just have to not leave. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> there's nothing you can, you got to just be here. Like, I'm lucky that... I have a seventh grader and a fourth grader, so they are pretty self-sufficient, like making sure the Zoom is happening, but then they're like, we got it. Mm -hmm. But these parents were with first, second graders who have to uh -huh. sit and make sure they change the Zooms and go to different places. You know, it's just like, I... so I will say that like, I am now the housekeeper. <laughs> uh, I have to do auditions and upload and edit them. Yeah. I have to uh, parent. Uh, I, I do my hair. I, I do this. I did this. This is all me. Like I, <laughs> you look fabulous, though. It's so uh, don't get, don't look too close, because it's, it's, it's <laughs> But like, you know, like the amount I might do my own pressure. I mean, like I am skills. I have skills that I didn't even realize. It's. Yeah. What about you? Are you? What are the things that you've discovered about yourself that you now are really good at or can do? Uh my multitasking is getting better. Mm -hmm. uh, I realize that I find vacuuming and mopping the floors incredibly therapeutic. <laughs> I got a new vacuum at the beginning. I love the vacuum. And by the way, my friend Jay, hello Jay, I love that you're here. She said, can you do my hair? <laughs> like, but let me tell you, I did my sister, no, I did my niece's hair. I did my daughter's yeah. hair. Like I'm out, I'm braiding up. I'm out there. I'll come braid your hair. Like I'll just yeah. put a mask yeah. on and braid it. It's anyway. just, and I stopped one thing with um. I stopped blow drying my hair because I realized that, and I feel like my hair is getting healthier again. And I've been really focusing because stress, especially for women, where do we feel the stress is? And our hair can be stressed out, which I didn't know was a thing. Um, and I've noticed because I used to have really thick, thick Indian hair growing up. And then over the years, especially filming, and you know, our hair takes a beating, so much of a beating, it's not as thick as it used to be. So right. I I stopped, um, I haven't blowed, I blow dried my hair once during this pandemic and it didn't make a difference. So yeah. I let it go and I just put the irons, like, well, the curling tongs through. Um, and I've been- It looks fantastic, by the way. It looks, it's, yes. It's getting healthier and thicker. And um, I have been using a mixture of castor oil and mm. coconut oil. So here's my mom's tip. You put one teaspoon of castor oil and mix it with two teaspoons of coconut oil, all organic cold pressed um, and mix them together. And then you dip your fingers in, you start massaging your hair on when it's hair day, when you have to wash your hair. So I wash my kind of hair, I have to wash twice a week. So I'll massage it early in the day and I'll leave it on for the whole day and I'll wash it out at night. And my gosh, guys, I'm not kidding. I put it on my eyelashes, everything. My eyelashes are growing. Like, let me right, let's talk about the tips. I'm loving the tips. <laughs> your hair looks amazing, and that is good stuff. Like, I am as soon as this is over, I'm gonna like Amazon some castor yeah, yeah. oil. Yeah, castor oil is so, so good. There's something. It it my hair is so shiny and healthy, and it's just growing. And mainly because I have wow. This is where I have my Asian genes. My Chinese lashes from my mom. They just go straight out. They don't go up, they don't go down, they're so stubborn. So I literally <laughs> have to like over and over again with the, the mascara. Yeah. But now, sorry guys, the guys are watching, this is a very gurney moment, but it's for your hair, it's all good. There's a point. 
But my eyelashes now are much longer than what they were two weeks ago because I'm just I, doing it at night. I have horrible lashes. Like if I don't, you, like it, horrible, horrible. So this is great news because I need that. And I was doing, and I, right before the pandemic, was getting my lashes done, like getting all the, you know. Yeah. Which as much as I love it, because it was right before the pandemic was award season and I got to go to the SAG Awards and the Golden mm -hmm. Globes and it was phenomenal. And so I was like, Sally McLashes over here. And now my lashes are hideous. But I will say that not wearing makeup all the time. I mean, I have some on today, but like my skin's bananas good now. It's that's the health that I see, you know, that's coming through. Isn't it? Funny? Tips about it. I just, it looks better with no makeup. <laughs> Because your skin is able to breathe. Yes. And I feel like there's more, I feel my skin's more dewy and, and more moisturizing too. So, um, cast You look 24. I mean, you look I... crazy. <laughs> I love you so much. <laughs> you look 24. But I will tell you, uh, the week after I turned 49, I got carded. I got carded. Mommy gets carded all the time. Is it so great? It, this is beige don't age and yep. black don't crack. That's black the bottom crack. line. <laughs> Call it, it's just the truth. And I'm sorry. It's just what we get for all the racism we have to put up with <laughs> in life. Yep. It's, our, it's, our, it's our gift. That's our reparations yes. right there. That's what I always say. That's one of the blessings I'm so grateful for. I've also been using, you know, another tip that I got from my um, makeup artist, Cassie, um, on Fear the Walking Dead. She brought this... Uh, have you seen it? It's like a, it's a tea bar, the tea bar, and okay. it vibrates, and it, you, oh. it's like a muscle relaxer. So uh, it's like yes, you guys, uh, guys. If you I'm sorry, my friend just said I look a thousand, and it's not true. <laughs> no, that's the funny. hottest guy ever, like ever. <laughs> I'm just that makes me laugh. Anyway, go on about the vibrating tea bar because I the also need to sign up for that. Yes, for yes. your face, for your yes. face. <laughs> I'm blushing um, <laughs> for your face. And it is it is instant Botox because it relaxes your muscles. It just massages everything. But then, you know, you also have those jade rollers and- uh, I have that. I have the little rose quartz yeah. ones, but it's, it's yeah. time. It's time. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> But even like the itch, but the one that you can get it on Amazon, it's like 11 bucks or 14 bucks. Um, I have to send you what? I'm going to send you all these links. Please, <laughs> because I'm literally like, I can't write it down. I'm on my phone. Like, I'm like, okay. no, somebody it's, write it. Jay, write it down. Somebody yeah. write it down. I need to it's know It's a Vivitar tea bar, but there's another kind too. But literally, it's like even the guys on our show, they absolutely love it because it's like a facial massage. And oh. how much tension we carry, if you just like, if everyone just like, you know, kind of massage right now on your cheeks, Let's do on it. your temples, okay. yeah, on your forehead, your jaw. It's like, it's I'm Because cool. you know what I've stopped doing? Because right? I'm a former, I was like, not a smoker smoker. Like, I didn't wake up in the morning like, I got to have it. But I was like a theater smoker. Like, oh, my God, so I get hung. You know, because I went to UCLA, I would sit on the benches and smoke. Yeah. So I now... I did. I was a big gum chewer, like big, like pre pandemic. Like, and even if you go in my car, it is stocked. Like, I cannot <laughs> with the gums. But because I'm home all the time, no gum. So my jaw is getting better. Yeah. Yeah. You know? But that, just even yeah. massaging it, even, yeah. it, it just feels so good. And then I do, I, every, every evening, yeah. I'll just do that. And all of a sudden, I feel like my whole face is just relaxed. Oh, I need it. Instant, I need that. Instant, I need instant the Botox thing. and free <laughs> and natural. I, because listen, first of all, I don't know where if I what, like my friend j had just gotten it done literally right before the pre pandemic. I was and she's like, no, nobody saw my Botox and it's gone. Like it's like <laughs> so. What am I mean? Like everyone just gotta wait, and then when we finally get to go out again, but yeah. maybe I won't need to do any like. Cause I just do a little tiny right here. Cause I have a horrible line. But it looks so natural. So, yeah. and that, that's the whole thing is it, of it being natural and looking natural. But I yeah. promise you this facial massager, oh my God, it's gonna change your life, love. I'm getting it. I'm it is getting so it. good. I'm gonna like send you tons of links to castor oil. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so excited. This is exciting, <laughs> but it's, good but stuff. It's so, 
this is all like um my mom is such a health freak like she's so good she's i don't know she's she might be tuning in now if you are on mom, hi. Hi, hi, is mama. she in india where is your mom is she so here mom where? mom and dad are in canada oh and there is whilst my heart aches so much that i can't be with them because it really there are days where i just literally am in tears because i just miss them so much and especially mm. with you know elderly parents you want to spend as much time with them as possible. So thank goodness for FaceTime, because we FaceTime like, I don't know, five, six, seven times a day. <laughs> but um, I, I, I miss them so much, but it is such a great comfort to me to know that they're in Canada, where they have managed to keep the numbers low, where the yeah. hospitals are not overwhelmed, and everything is pretty much reopened again, and everyone wears a mask, everyone. I hate, I mean, and here's the thing. I just tweeted about this. It's like, first of all, what part of Canada? Like, like Toronto or Vancouver? Toronto. What, that's where this is from, by the way. Yo! I went to, what's that market? The St. Peter's, what is that market? The market that's down? So there's St. Lawrence Market, and then there's a distillery district. That, the, the first one you said. St. Lawrence Market, yeah. Yes, because I used to live down on Fleet, and I got a bike, and I'd ride my bike. I mean, I love Toronto. Like, it's... And I even call it, I say it properly, Toronto. Toronto, yeah. Toronto. Um, loved living there. Loved living there for conviction. It was my favorite, my favorite, my favorite. The, the tram system, like the whole subway. I'd take the subway to work. I mean, I was, I'd go, because there was a trolley right outside my apartment, and I would take that, and then I would get on the sub. I was like, it's the greatest. Um, I was just tweeting that even if you don't believe in COVID, and even if you think it's a hoax, your life is so severely affected. Like, it doesn't matter if you, like, there's places you can't go if you don't wear a mask. There's no more concerts right now. There's, like, sporting events. Like, all these things have m no movies. Like, so just get on the bus so we can end this. Like, just get, like, because it's, it's not going to end if you just, if everyone doesn't comply. Like, we have to do this because it's real and it's really happening. Yeah. It's, so it's, one thing, it's one thing to wear a mask for ourselves, but mm -hmm. I care about my fellow brothers and sisters, right? I care well, about it's, you. I, I wear a mask. About... It's, it's the mask for me is considered the mask for you. It's like the namaste thing, you know, like I wear it for you and you wear it for me. And like having compassion and having empathy and having, you know, care for our fellow man, like that is what's missing. And I, that like, I, that's what I love about Canada is like, they are the kindest country, mm. truly. Yeah. yeah, always apologizing, even though they don't need to apologize, right? Yeah. <laughs> sure. Where um, even politically, the political parties, is, they don't make it about politics, they work together. They work together in harmony because it's for the greater good. It's for the right. well-being and the safety of each and every citizen. And, um, that, that gives me such enormous comfort that my whole family are in Toronto and I know they're okay. And so I keep telling my mom and dad, I said, the best thing you can do for me is just keep healthy, be happy and, and just, just keep doing your thing. And, and I will come and see you as soon as it's, you know, safe. Cause my I mom would just move thing, up there. If yeah. I were you, I'd be like, you know what? You, cause you can, cause you got the passport. Yeah. Yeah, we do. We do. And, and, uh, well, let's see what, Let's see what happens, you know? Right. Right. November coming up and uh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> do we wanna go there or do we wanna get back to Girl Talk? I know, Girl Talk, Girl <laughs> Talk, yeah, Girl Talk. <laughs> Give everybody a break from the real world for a minute. Uh, but one thing I do love is my mom keeps, she's, she has these uh, regular conversations with my uncle who lives in the Himalayas. And over there, I feel like um, my, my extended family have all these wonderful natural homeopathic remedies for everything and so castor oil has been a big topic because again for hair for skin if you have acne it's very good but also which we just learned my dad had a knee injury so he, his knee was quite swollen mom put castor oil on it and took away the pain um and the sweat it sent it, it okay. creates heat, which is nice and warm for that area too. And and my dad was healed within like like a week 
of rest and castor oil on the kneecap joint. This is something I absolutely <laughs> love because that like my knee was blowing up from all the walking. It was like completely yeah. blowing up, and so castor I was like, like, yeah, all right, yeah. Come on. Put castor oil on there. And then if there's any left, because we've done, now told everybody to see I know, I know. Everybody's online. <laughs> I have like, to go get a like, cold pressed organic castor I'm going to go to like Amazon and be like. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and then the latest one that we tried, which I have to admit, I'm just going to warn you guys. Um, it was a bit hard to drink, but it's, you get three pineapples mm -hmm. and you blend it. You remove the pulp. And you put in one turnip, a white turnip. So I know it's not, it's not really good, but that's why you have the pineapples, right? So you, you take this, this turnip and um, you put a bit of turmeric in there as well, uh, just a pinch of, of, of turmeric in it, and you blend it. Now, the taste is actually okay because the pineapple is quite strong. It keeps it sweet. But the smell, woo! <laughs> It is, I can't even explain it. It's like as soon as, we have it in a bottle in the fridge, but as soon as you open the bottle, how okay, can but I how can I explain this? Just imagine like maybe 10 people in one closed space um, letting off gas. <laughs> it's just so. <laughs> okay, hold please. What are we, why are we drinking this? Why, why? It cleans your liver. Oh, listen. And your colon. It I'll do a thousand liver. things before I do that. I will do yeah. a thousand things. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, so, I, but I will say this. It's, it's, if you don't want to do a colonic or anything, because I've done a colonic. I did a colonic once. Have you? Have I've you ever not. Done I'm oh, very on LA for having not done that. That was I, like all the rage in the 90s. <laughs> I love that we're talking about colonics now. This is just segueing into this. But we're, we're like, so I mean, I, listen, I'm all for it. I think everybody's following. <laughs> it's all like, I hope we're not losing everybody like for this. But I think especially with God rest his soul, the passing of Chadwick Boseman, it has raised awareness on the importance yeah. of um, colon oh, health. And how a lot of much younger people are, um, are getting colon cancer. Uh, especially within the Latino, um, Black community, Asian, um, it's, it's, it's on the rise. So I, so my mom was, she's always, like I said, always doing research on the latest health things and my uncle gives her these tips. I will say part of the reason why I feel like I have glowing skin is because I drank. <laughs> I drank three times, okay, in one week. I did break out a little because you're clearing out things. So then now I just do it once a week. And yes, it does stink. But what I do is I, I literally plug my nose and I just chug it down. It tastes how much do you have to drink? Like how much, how much do you have to drink? Just a glass. A glass. Like eight, like eight ounces? Like a small, a small glass like that. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's it. So um, it, I'm not so going to come out <laughs> But I will say this. So I have, this is one of the things I got for Christmas was an air fryer. And it's oh. unbelievable. Because you can just literally throw your Brussels sprouts, you chop them up, you throw them in there with a little olive oil for 15 minutes and they're crispy and delicious. Like it's like, it's so easy. So I do that with cauliflower or broccoli. And then like, I've done that before and then I'll leave and come back and it's like, like the smell of a cooked cauliflower or broccoli is pretty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's good but it tastes good but it's just yeah the smell is questionable like the pineapple turnip thing um but i promise now, are we having three giant pineapples or like three pineapple rings like do i know three... so like three proper pineapples three proper pineapples and because you're removing the pulp right so it does reduce the volume so that's why you have to have three and it keeps the sweetness honestly to drink it it's fine but it's just the smell that can be a little bit paralyzing. So, is it going through a juicer or can I blend it all? You can blend it. We used our Vitamix, but then Carl had to use a sieve to, um, to keep the pulp, to separate the pulp. So if you do have a juicer, even better. But it's, right. it is so good. If you can have it at least once a week, you are doing your, your, your liver, your colon is going to be so happy. All right. Okay. So, All right. Castor um, oil and colon. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my, my little tip is I got really into celery juice. Have you done this yet? Celery, celery juice? juice. 
Celery juice is excellent. Yeah. Celery juice. So I try and do that first thing. It's a little hard with the 615 swim team that I've been doing, but like if I do my celery juice, and so when, when you're talking about getting the straining it, I got one of those bags like at the Whole Foods so you can mm -hmm. put the pulp in, you know, you put, you dump it through there and then you can yeah. squeeze it out. You get yeah. more juice than you do to a sieve. Yeah. Because um, I have the Vitamix as well. But celery juice. So how do you make your celery juice? I just, like, I, honestly, it's, it's usually like a whole bunch. Like, that's mm -hmm. how much I use. And I, I mean, like a, a small bunch, organic, rinse it, chop it, throw it in the Vitamix, run it through the sieve or the, the almond, mm -hmm. like it's like a juice bag. And yeah. then that's it. And you're supposed <laughs> to have it not cold, just right. And you don't have to do it fresh. Like, I would do it the night before, but you're supposed to have it straight fresh from the, as soon as you, you know. That's so good. Celery yeah. juice is very good. But I'm yeah. impressed that you have it straight up. That's really oh, you have, but you're supposed to. Like, you're not supposed to no. make anything. I know, because I might have cheated. I might have added one apple. But now I know. Okay, I've learned. Yes. Straight up. Straight straight up. up. No, yeah, you got to straight up and just <laughs> muscle through it, because it's not great. But yeah. um, somebody was like, is this a hangover cure? I'm like, no, it is a hangover cure. <laughs> straight up. <laughs> okay okay well look i feel like if i can handle the smell of the turnip pineapple then i should be able to handle the oh, this is nothing <laughs> this doesn't even smell like this is just like it's like which is water. worse though which is worse the smell or the taste like i just wonder mm -hmm. right it's a mixed bag it's a mixed I just, bag for I just sure. my nose and just drink it just go, 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 get it over with <laughs> But you do, you do feel better though. I will say this, that, that you do feel better. I would do that over the colonic because when I did oh, the colonic, sure. I, and look, and, and before, I just want everyone to know that I don't want to put off any one of you from, if you wanted to do a colonic, because some of my friends, they think it's the best thing. They're like, yeah, it's great. For me, it was like having a permanent stomach ache for one hour. Oh no, yeah, I don't need it. It's not worth it. It sounds- I, I was literally, my hands were over my head and I was literally lying down and I was like, ah, that's all I was doing for the whole hour. And Carl, oh my God, this is so funny. So Carl and I went together. So he, it was like his and hers. So he was literally next door and he could hear me. He could hear me going, ah. And he was like, he was absolutely fine. He's like, yeah, this is great. And I'm like, I no, not for me, not for me. I was like, no, no. <laughs> so yeah, I'll I'll stick to the pineapple turnip and the celery juice. I don't even like I like I have never even seen a turnip at the like a parsnip I've seen, but a turnip I have not. I have to like look. Yeah, it's a white turnip. My mom said that you can get. I guess. <laughs> Bottoms up. I make you some and drop off. I'll, I'll, uh... <laughs> I'm going to, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do it and I'm going to post it and yeah. I'm going to send it to you and be like, I'm very proud of you. I'll do a whole video. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, you have so many, so many who love you quite understandably, of course. And there were so many wonderful questions that came in. So I thought I'd go through some of these questions for you, my love, oh, yes. um, from some of your beloved fans. Uh, at Amy Laura 101, she asks, Marin, if you could relive any moment in history, which would you choose? That is an excellent question. Any moment? Oh my moment gosh. History, I, I just came up with the dumbest moment of all time. Um, <laughs> For myself yeah <laughs> I mean because if you like look you want to you know like would it have been great to see Martin Luther King speak yes at the mall it would be incredible to be honest all right so I have two um if I could have been at uh Obama's any either one of his inaugurations that would have been unreal like to actually have been there mm -hmm. I'm glad I got to see them but to have been there would have been amazing um, but I was, okay, so I was watching, my, any, any of my fans know that I'm a huge 80s fan. So Duran Duran is my band. Like that's oh. my band. It's my band. And uh, if I, I was watching the Sing Blue Silver documentary with my sister the other night. And I was like, 
the, all the concert footage is from the Oakland concert. And I remember like everyone at my middle school, like leaving to go to Oakland that night for the concert and go to the show. And I was just like, like devastated. And I said, I'm like, I'm like, I'm bitter every time that I didn't get to go to that show. And she's like, I don't think we would, would have been able to handle it. And trust me, I've seen them a million times since. But like, just if I had gotten to see them in 84, if I had gotten to see my band in 84. And I love Duran Duran. My sister, my older sister, she always got dumped with babysitting duties. So I could never listen to my, you know, Humpty Dumpty, Mary Had a Little Lamb song. I was literally this four-year-old singing Hungry Like a Wolf at school <laughs> as my nursery. Right. That was my jam. Was Hungry Like the Wolf. <laughs> Good on your sister, because that is awesome. <laughs> or the reflex. Like, I was singing all those songs. You're like, black, 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 oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and they're like. And, oh, my gosh, my teachers, because I went to a Catholic school, so my teachers were on the phone to my parents saying, what are you allowing your daughter to listen to? You're and like, girls like, on film. Yes. Yeah. Like, so it was, um, it was three years ago at the iTunes Festival back in London. I met Simon Le Bon. And can I just tell you, you know, in that moment, where you, you you want to fangirl like crazy, but you want to be really calm and, and maintain some dignity. Um, and then you want to ask for a photo, but then you think, no, because you understand what that's like. So you don't want to ask. So I was just like sort of paralyzed. I was like, eh, 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 eh. I couldn't even speak. I was just paralyzed with like oh, complete awe because I, like you, I, I've never seen them live. And you have, and I, oh, I'd just love to. Yeah, yeah, um, I love that. What I was going to tell you is that um, I did get a photo with them because my sister, back when she was the president of ABC, yeah, um, who I believe greenlit Gallivant, um, yeah. yes, uh, so we got to go to the show at the Hollywood Bowl and we got to go to the pre thing, um, the, the, like this pre party. And John Taylor was there and Simon Le Bon. And so we, you know, had like nice chats with them and got photos. <laughs> and I will say that because Simon was my favorite. So yeah. Simon said, he said, and what's your name? And I said, Marin. He goes, oh, Marin. <laughs> so beautiful. That really suits you. And I was like. <laughs> and then my panties burst into flames. And then we took a photo. <laughs> I will post, I will, just for the fan, I will, for everyone here, I will post it on Please, my Instagram can right you after post this. It? Oh, my oh yeah. God. It's saved and in my favorites because it's forever. Yeah, yeah. And he's so tall. I mean, mind <laughs> you, everyone's taller than me, but he's super tall. He's not that tall. You're just really small. <laughs> You're like a door. You're like I a felt like he was like six, four, six, I mean, he's five. Six two, but like, you know. Also, he's the same height as my husband, but he felt really tall, like extra tall. But then I'm well, it's yeah. all the you know, some yeah. of the bonds. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. That's so good. I love that. Was a good question. It's a great question. question. Thank you, Amy Laura. Um, let's see. Oh, at Amelia Phelps asks, your toughest scene to film on Once Upon a Time. Who? That is also an. Excellent question, and one that no one has ever asked me about once upon a time. Um, well, it depends on, there's several answers to that. Okay, like my first, the first thing that was like the toughest because it was hot was when we were all in that room with Pinocchio and the fire was going and we're on the soundstage and it, I'm in the leather jacket, the full thing. And it's, it was just, and all of us in there, it just was uncomfortable. Like, so it was difficult because it was hot. Then there was other ones where it's like, pouring down rain and you can't tell when they're shooting it and I'm in the corset and we're out there and it's just pouring down rain and there's mud and I'm like I, I I'm not sure if, I'm sure this happened to you where you if they, you know you'd go to lunch and you just leave your skirts like for the you know wardrobe you have to leave them on the stairs of your trailer yeah. um because they had to clean them at lunchtime or dry them at least um my but like difficult in terms of emotion maybe um the scenes with hook that whole episode was really i mean he was so phenomenal colin's so phenomenal yeah. but getting there and feeling you know uh having 
I, you know, that argument that we had below, and I, you know, when I don't get my voice back at first, and we, he's like, we don't know why it's working. Like that scene itself was there was a lot happening there for me, um, you know, for Ursula. So that I think that that was the most challenging scene to shoot. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think also because with, with Once Upon a Time, we film outdoors, we have to deal with all the elements as well. Uh, I remember we were shooting um, outside during the winter time, and I literally just told <laughs> Eduardo, I said, you know what, you can pad me up like a Michelin doll. I don't care, <laughs> it's so cold. Pad me up. And I was like, and I think, and uh, Dennis had um, electric long johns. <laughs> yes. And Colin was so jealous. He was like, well, I'd like some electric long johns, but they won't fit in my skinny pants. <laughs> so there is no way he could fit them in his skinny jeans. So poor Colin, it was, it was biting me cold, but I could just imagine when, when it's like pouring rain and it just soaks the corset and the your costume down, it just makes you feel so much heavier too to, it, it's, yeah, it's not. It's brutal. And I, the first, I, was, I said this the other day to somebody, the first time I had to wear the corset, both Ginny and uh, Lana were like, don't eat lunch. Just don't eat lunch. And I was like, what are you, I'm so, what are you talking about? Don't, and they're like, don't take it off. And I'm like, what? I, of course, ignored them, took it off, ate lunch, and then couldn't get back on. Like, it was so uncomfortable to get it back on because your food is just right there. Mm -hmm. So then we had, like, soups and smoothies for the rest of the run because... Yeah. That, that's what Eduardo told me. Um, he, he said, uh, liquid... Uh, you're on a liquid diet <laughs> whilst you're, you're in the Jasmine costume because it's because we have our mic packs as well on and um, our costumes are so intricate, yours more so. Um, but even with the harem pants, like, it, it just became so difficult to, to even go for a wee <laughs> in between. Oh so, my God. And I was three hours hair and makeup because I had all that extra hair and the crown, which weighed up pounds and um i mean all those things were just like oh crazy yeah. heavy um and 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 then my you know my mic pack would be in the back i will say this it was also very difficult to to figure out how to fight like the first few like because the tentacles are cgi so you know of course when you want to fight you want to you know so if you mm -hmm. look in that very first ep episode where we have um bell kidnapped on the on the rocks I kind of have my hands up a little because I'm ready to go. And it's like, I had to learn how to use my hips to, you know, make that's my instrument of fighting. This, Those this, hands. Whole new, yeah, this whole new physicality and, yeah. you know, tapping into that childlike imagination with CGI. I feel like every time when we do CGI green work, I have to tell myself, okay, it's time to be a kid. Cause when we're kids and we're playing, we, if, if there's a dungeon in front of us, we truly commit and believe there's a dungeon in front of us, you know? So that's where I come and say, oh, time to be a kid now and <laughs> just play imaginary and let on. I think that's what made that show so much fun because like, when was I ever gonna really be in a corset and like all these things and, and like when they put the fans on, they the dragon, like when the dragon comes flying up and you know, when people would poof from yeah. space to space um, and you just have to freeze and go with it. Yeah. Um, I will say that, there was a scene when we're back at that cabin and um, I've got Ginny in a chokehold with my tentacles. Mm -hmm. um, my dad, Ernie Hudson, has come in in his big Poseidon wear. You know, Hook is there and Jen's about to use her magic hands, you know, and then like, you know, they freeze for like the commercial break moment. Mm -hmm. And we're all like, you know, in our <laughs> thing. And, and then it, we like let go and like Ginny just goes, acting's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> So true, because you're just like, uh-huh. Yeah, that's oh, really Oh, that's so brilliant. Your timing is so brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's weird. Like, we're all doing really, like, it's like, I'm going to go do my bills, like, pay my, oh, but now I'm going to go poof over yeah. here. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah like, don't mind me. I'm just going to go poof. <laughs> Look at, work on my tentacles and, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Our jobs are weird. It's fantastic, but it's weird. But speaking of jobs, now as we're finding that a lot of productions are gearing back to go to work, castings are happening, um, and we're doing self tapes for different things. I don't know about you, but I because it's been six months, I feel rusty. I feel like the worst actor. Uh, I feel like 
when I had to uh, put myself on tape um, for a few things, um, just memorizing lines, I was so good. It's a muscle that you work constantly, but if you're not doing it regularly, and this is a first chunk of time, I, I was telling my husband, I was like, oh my gosh, that muscle needs exercise big time right now. Like now I'm just doing a little bit every day with just anything, mm -hmm. eating or whatnot. Do you find that? Because I feel like, oh my gosh, I'm in trouble. <laughs> well, it, it, honestly, I will say that I have been auditioning since this thing started for the most part. Like they, they just sort of kept coming. So I feel like I did keep that muscle, but I, I know what you're saying. It's like, like, you know, the first audition for pilot season, cause you'll have that big, you know, holiday break. And then all of a sudden it's like January 15th and you're like, wait, what, you know? Yeah. Um, but I, there's also a COVID atrophy, like this whole thing of trying to do anything sometimes right now feels like it's too much you know it's just um i somehow i guess maybe when school started and the auditions started kicking up like in the last three weeks i finally felt like myself again i feel like my life is busier again um but i think part of it is the COVID atrophy of just sort of like not doing anything particularly in those first three months where there was like no end in sight you know yeah, I know. I it, it's uh, now that we're, we're we're all sort of getting ready, and I see other. Um, it's so funny. Some of my friends who have friends on, on uh, soap opera shows, uh, they about the intimate scenes now with this whole new COVID protocol. Um, they're having to either use dolls or, yeah. or they're they're in their uh, actual mates. Yeah. Yeah. Their actual or their actual people. yeah. Spouses. in real life they'll have to stand in and they'll do the kissing scenes like that it's it's just so it's just so different now you know and and look i i'm in such admiration for all those for all our unions who have had to work tirelessly i don't even i can't even begin to wrap my head around how many hours spent to put together covid protocols for us to return be able to return to work in this new norm um, because for every solution, there's so many other variables. I feel like it's a sorry. I paused for a second. Oh, um, okay. You go down a certain path. Yeah, yeah. You go down a certain path, and then all of a sudden, yeah, it's uh, uh, you meet, you turn left, and then you hit a wall, and then you're like, oh, okay, so take two steps back, and then re re navigate yourself, and then. It, it, it's it's just such a it's a bit mind trickery, you know. But um, I'm very grateful that uh, we're able to, you know, things seem to be picking up again and and whatnot. But I'm excited. I'm so I, I miss being creative. I miss, you know, thank goodness we have this. Yes. But um, you know, you just it just makes you even more grateful, as you said, just grateful for um, you know, the times that we are working and being able to do what we love so much, you know. My gratitude for so many things in my former life is extraordinary, you know, extraordinary. You know, we, we are so lucky to get to do what we do. And the people that we get to meet is like <sighs> endless joy. I know. I, I, that's, that's the best part is the amazing thing is that you get to meet um, like you. Because <laughs> Marin and I first met guys at LAX. <laughs> Like, at the airport. we were on the same flight. Oh my god! And I, you know, you know when you see someone who obviously I I knew of you because Victoria, like the whole gang, so we right. feel like we all know each other. But then I was looking at you so much, I thought, oh god, I I have to go and talk to her. Otherwise, she's going to totally think that I'm like <laughs> <laughs> this weirdo, just kind of like looking like it's that look like. I know you, I know you, I do, <laughs> I go up and say hi, da, da, da. but we met at LAX and you had just come back from Toronto. I think so, I think that was yeah. what it was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're on that flight. Um, yeah, Canada. And it's just, see, this is one thing that I'm so grateful about once upon a time too. I feel like we are forever intrinsically part of this, this family, you know, in yeah. this fandom, within the fans, but within the cast as well. Like we're just this one huge, um, family which is so nice and that 
that's one of the great things from you know the different shows that we're in we're in that we're lucky enough to be in that we can take away all these amazing friendships that you that you make you know it's a real gift that we got to take with us so i'm very grateful for that uh there's time for a few more questions um oh. at german dot lana perilla fan she says tell us a funny moment from the once upon a time set <laughs> <laughs> well any funny moment involved is Vicky Smurfit because she's bananas and we have <laughs> time ever. Is it again? Oh. That's okay. Um, God. Oh my God. My, my, she would do Ice Ice Baby. She would always, and she'd, she'd sing it with her Irish accent and that would make me cry laughing. And also Kristen would have, she had this staff that was, um, like a dragon and she would talk, it would like, she'd like, it would be facing forward and then she would be like, I'm just, what? Like, no, I... <laughs> and she'd have these conversations with it. And I'd also get her to do like Pam lines from like True Blood and she'd just get the stance. Oh my God, those were my favorite, favorite moments of all time. Like working with those women, we had a ball. But uh, the all time favorite is when it was Lana and me and Vicky and Kristen in the car dancing uh, to the 70s because I always have music I always have music on me so yes women the four <laughs> of you oh yes. my gosh it was good times oh, really good times um at erica.carson she asks how was it to work with Angie and Sasha on Disney and Isle I'm sorry, on which what? Huh? She said she said how was it to work with Angie and Sasha on Risley and Isle Oh, on Rizzoli and Isle. <gasps> oh my God, Rizzoli. Rizzoli. There we go. <laughs> that was like, in the like, English accent, okay. we place the emphasis on different bits of the name. <laughs> aluminium, aluminium. Exactly. I was just going to say aluminium. aluminium. <laughs> and the way you said massa massage. A massage. A massage. <laughs> A massage. Um, just, yeah. <laughs> they were fantastic. Oh my God, I love both of those women. Angie and Sasha were fantastic. It was such a pleasure. Really, a great show. Yeah. Really fun. You I wish I had more than one episode. Sorry, no. Go ahead. Sorry. I, I was just saying, I wish I had more than one episode with them, but it was really fun. You played so many extraordinary characters. I mean, I absolutely loved you on Big Little Lies, which I binge watched at the start of the pandemic. Um, do, you must get asked this often about like, which is your favorite role? Well, I, I mean, know. it's so tough. I guess this is the best answer is Francie from Alias, particularly being bad Francie, as we called her when she turned, um, because that was an extraordinary opportunity to do something I'd never done. It was not necessarily where we thought it was going to go, but then JJ came up with this wonderful idea. And uh, it was, I mean, I wouldn't have done Ursula, if, if not for that, they, the guys were like, we loved you doing that. We thought it was amazing. We thought of you right away when we were doing Ursula. Like, you know, it, 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 it spawned so many things. That job gave me so many gifts. And I trained for a year to do that fight. And wow. um, so it was the, the job that not only gave me so many things, it gave me an opportunity to do so many things that I don't normally get to do. Um, you know, uh, so many characters that I play, you know, are authority figures or detectives or, you know, so, you know, Francie and, and, and Ursula, like, like, are these things that are other, like really, you know, where I really had to work and got to play and got to have fun and got to challenge myself. So I think that that's what I would say, but both of those roles are the most fun because they, I really got to grow as an actor as opposed to not, I mean, playing a cop with Meryl Streep is also amazing, but it's not so far to imagine, you know, Gosh, and many more amazing roles to come your way. I know, I know. I was just looking through your body of work and I was like, yep, loved her in that. Yep, loved her in that. Yep, loved her in that. <laughs> I mean, you're this wonderful, I think, what's, uh, and, and, and I hope I can make you blush right now. But I think what's so wonderful about Marin too is that you are this incredibly, just incredibly loving and, and authentic and beautiful human being. And on top of that, you're such an inspiration to a lot of young girls and boys of color and black boys and black girls too. And um, 
you know, all that you do, you know, opens doors for the younger ones too, you know, so. Well, and, and back at you, you know what I'm saying? It's all about representation. It's all about showing up. It's all about being seen and going like, I can do that, you know? And when I started, uh, it was not that way, you know? And I always played the best friend. I always came in and said, how can I help you? What can you, I do for you, you know? And to do these roles where that is not the case. And I actually have a last name or a love relationship or, you know, a journey. My character goes on a journey is, you know, and I'm sure you are very familiar with that as well, because there's like, you know, just certain things for many years where actors of color did not get to do anything of interest. Yeah. But the tides have turned. I was just on the phone with my manager and I said, you know what, I, I can openly I feel more comfortable saying this openly that I think for a long time, I was really afraid to say no to jobs because I felt like, well, if they're coming to you, you should be so lucky because there's not that many opportunities for someone of my color or, yeah. you know, this whole thing that we are up against where we go, when we go up for an audition, they have this ethnic quota how many people have ticked the, oh, we, oh, we've met our ethnic quota by yeah. having one person maybe of color. Um, yes. And, and uh, it, it's, um, we've waited a long time. It's been a long night for the tides to change We're on something that should just be. And the no. thing is in England, it's been, oh, it's been very different for a really long time. Like that, you know, they'd have many actors of color for so many different shows, you know, and I remember you know, when I was married, going back to England for Christmas and watching these television shows, and it was like, oh, wow, you know, because my ex-husband's British, and it was just, you get these CVs, you know, it was just, it was extraordinary. And to now have that be ours, you know, and I, and I, and the quota thing, I remember getting a pilot once, and they ended up casting the, the lead guy uh, as African-American, and I went, oh. and he got cast after me, and I went, I'm gonna get fired. I'm gonna get fired, because they, they don't need me now. They're gonna get somebody else. And they didn't, which is lovely yeah. that it happened. But yeah. you know. It, they could it's, have. I know. It just it's one of those things that I think it was like maybe it was three pilot scenes ago. I was going to be testing for the show and uh, I was I was gonna test and then literally the night before the test, we got the call and said, Oh, they've met their ethnic quota with another character. I, I mean I that should be illegal hearing. that they say that. That should be illegal that they say that. Isn't that insane? I couldn't believe I was hearing that. I just had to laugh. I was like, right? First of all, that they didn't even just like like disguise it and say they decided to go in a, another way. I know. That's what they did. <laughs> go the yeah, yeah. But at least, I mean, in a way, the fact that they were very transparent, I thought, okay, at least they're saying it as crazy as it is. At least they're... Yeah, they're not saying we're going another way, which they were, but um, yes, they've met their ethnic quota. <laughs> there's the ethnic quota. There's the thing I was working on when I was doing Conviction and where they have you, you know, when you do those like, you know, promo photos. And uh, I, it was uh, me and another actor who's Hispanic. And, you know, he was like, because we were both on the ends, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, you have to mix us in because then you can't cut us out of the phone. You know, it was just like a whole, it's a journey. It's a lot of things that we have to sort of confront and hair and makeup, yeah. you know, like, you know, I always have my base, always have my base, always. Or and I call and say, this is what you need to get because you just never know what they're gonna put on your face. Yeah, yeah. And it's so, you think, um, for those watching, you think something like that is, is quite small, but it's, it's not. Like, and I'm so glad you brought that up because I have had to do the same thing to bring my own, either custom base, uh, if you can get a custom base made, or to tell them the exact colors to use. Because either I look to ash gray, mm -hmm. or I look orange. Yes. So literally one extremity to the other and and it's really tough even when we work with um different makeup artists if we're doing press junkets sometimes in the beginning when you you know it's very much uh you're going by recommendation but sometimes you know you work with some that uh that think and of course i respect that they're experienced and all that but you and i both know our skin better than anyone else i am too old and have for i would say 15 <laughs> 20 years carry it in my purse 
every time. Unless I know, you know, like, you know, like once I'm on a, like doing a series, they have gotten it and they know what they're doing. But like yeah. any press junket, any, anything, I've got it. I have it in my bag because I, I, they don't make me, I look ashy or muddy. They make it yes. too dark. Yeah. yeah, I look it's like a one time. Time. Yeah, <laughs> and then my mom, my mom will say to me, Karen, Karen, you can't, like, she'll, she'll be the first one to say, you're being too nice. I know you're afraid to speak up. She goes, speak up? She goes, you don't look good. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Just tell me. Mom, to see, that's good. typical Karen, mom. I love her. Castor oil. Did you tell them to get the castor oil because you better have that in your bag? Get your castor oil. She'll just call it like it is. own vibrator, and you better have your baby. <laughs> <laughs> but then this God bless our mothers, you know, they keep it real. And my mom will tell me, she said, you have to stop being, uh, you know, so scared of that you're going to come off as being demanding or anything. She goes, right. you're not. People who know you know you know who you are. She yes. said, you have to speak up. Because that does rob me of my confidence. It, Completely. It, you look crazy. crazy. It just, it's so demoralizing where I just have no confidence within seconds if it's too dark or too orange or too ash gray too. So uh, yeah, yep. I, I totally empathize with your plight too, because it's the same thing here, sister. So, <laughs> but knowing that we have this wonderful community of sisterhood, um, it, it just, especially within our community of, of people of color too, it just, I, I don't feel alone. You know, no, and that no. we're able to have these uncomfortable conversations out now in the open because yes. people are more um, uh, engaged and, and, and listening just means so much. Totally. So much. Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe how quickly an hour's gone by. We've talked about everything under the sun and I love it. <laughs> it's like, oh, this has been delightful. Like so much fun. Such a such a joy. I can't thank you enough, honestly. Oh no, thank you so much. Love. Do you want to say any last words to your your darling fans and followers on here? I'm so grateful that anybody showed up to like hang out with us and have a good time and hear some fun. I mean, like what a you know, like take thank you guys for taking the time. Yeah. And uh and Marin, just remind everyone where they can follow you on Instagram and Twitter. Uh I believe I am Real Marin Dungy on Instagram and Real Marin D on Twitter. Okay. And we'll post those links too. <laughs> we will. Um, I hope I see you soon. I'll I come do too. one of your walks or something. So yeah. just let me know. Magic. Yeah, so I'll come you. get in this pool because I have a little side entrance and it's like. <sighs> okay. I and the puppies that. need to meet. The puppies need oh, to meet. Oh, yeah. We could do a puppy play date. I miss hugging, but I'll send you a big virtual hug. Same, 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 same. And to love, all love. the fans. Thank you, love. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye, Bye guys.